Good morning. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, just a quick question for you. Has this ever been you in online learning of any description? I can kind of relate. Uh, the first time I experienced any form of online learning, uh, this was pretty much. So yeah, I, I remember this. Uh, my daughter had just been born. Um, literally a few weeks and I worked for a, a big bank at the time and I sat down completing various compliance training courses there was treating customers fairly the banking code how not to sell PPI and all these fantastic topics and kind of that, that was my experience really and nine years later here I am as a digital learning specialist talking to you about how I go about making digital learning engaging. So that's kind of my story. Um, so I thought today it would be important that I kind of engage with your sensors. And I knew that I needed to use my digital skills to have some nice visual things going on. You've got my beautiful northern tones to entertain you for the next 30 minutes. Um, but I was thinking kind of like touch and feel. How do we get the audience to touch and feel me? I don't want you to form an orderly queue right now, that's OK. Um, has anyone got a mobile phone with them at all? <laughs> Six, <laughs> I don't believe you. Um, has anyone got Twitter? This is good news. Is anybody on Twitter right now? Tweeting as we go through this session. Anyone doing that? You, 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 oh, I'd love you to. Would you do that? 
Um, are you all right for battery power? OK, well, let me give this uh, DPG bag here. There's a little charger in there for you in case you run out. Fantastic. There we go. Good stuff. So today, I'm going to be engaging with your sensors, visual, audio, and your touch as well. If you are on Twitter, there's all sorts of tweets that are happening right now. There's a, a digital handout for you to peruse through as well. And we'll get through it together. This is my first ever speaking gig, by the way. Um, so whilst I look after the, the visual, audio, and the touch, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about the smell, I'm sorry. It's the best laxative on the market. Um, sorry, rude of me. I didn't introduce myself. My name's AD. I'm a digital learning specialist for an organization called DPG. Uh, we provide CIPD qualifications across HR and L&D. And my role in the business is a digital learning specialist. So anything to do with learning technology, uh, I positively stick my nose into, and that, that's what I do. Um, but it's fair to say that I'm a specialist. I'm not an expert in what I'm about to talk about. I'm hoping that rows and rows of people don't start flooding out of the door right now. Um, it's OK to be a specialist in the world of digital, because actually technology is moving so quickly, there's always new stuff to learn about. What's current today is out of date tomorrow. So being a specialist and kind of one notch down from an expert, I'm OK with that. Actually, there's some of my skill level where I'm a complete novice in, things that are brand new to me. There's some areas where I'm skilled. And wherever you come from, that might represent your team as well. You might be sort of experts or you might be uh, brand new to things. So that's specialist. The other word in my job title is digital. And I'm hugely excited about the word digital. I love that. Because uh, it kind of doesn't keep me in one box. It's not e-learning. It's not mobile learning, it's not social learning, it's not light, it's all of those things wrapped together. Because for me, digital is online as much as it is offline. So traditionally, we've thought of e-learning as being something that we do, sat in front of a computer. But actually, a large part of my job is to provide tools for the classroom as well. So tools for our facilitators, tools for our learners within the classroom, uh, reference material that they can refer to as they're going through workshops. Digital is also live, as well as being on demand. So again, typically we thought of online learning as being something that we sit in front of a computer at a time that's convenient to us, or at a time that's convenient to somebody else that tells us to do it. Uh, but now with live platforms, webinars, uh, broadcast technology at our fingertips. There's an ability to have live digital learning. And this is all very exciting. Uh, digital is exclusive and it's inclusive. And what I mean by that is, historically, people have sort of completed learning online on their own. Uh, but actually, there's nothing wrong with a group of people engaging with digital. And when you start using online communities, uh, to bring to life the learning that people do and glue them into those real conversations, uh, digital becomes a lot more sort of inclusive of everybody around. And I guess the final thing to say is digital is connected as well as it is disconnected as well. And if, like me, you traveled here last night with super fast Wi-Fi on the train, I guess you didn't, uh, digital sometimes needs to be disconnected. Sometimes it's about downloading things and accessing them in different sorts of ways. So I love the word digital. And the final word to, to talk to you about is the word learning. So at the heart of everything that I do is this learning word. And it would be no good for me to be a digital learning specialist without having an understanding of L&D, without having an understanding of how performance changes and how organizational learning happens. So for me, being qualified as a CIPD member through DPG is absolutely the right thing to do. I have the digital side, but I keep very close to me the fact that people are learning as well. And what's the point of digital learning content if people don't necessarily learn from it? So just before I put this session together, which I've never delivered before, I hope it's going all right so far, 
um, I started doing some research. I, I call it research, you'll probably call it Googling. And I came across a, an organization called Go On Digital. Worth looking up. Twitter, have a look at the link I just sent out for it. Uh, Go On Digital have done lots of research around the UK looking at digital skills. And they've concluded some shocking results in terms of where we are as a nation with our digital capability. Um, towards maturity, they have a new report out today at DPG. We're proud sponsors of the work that Towards Maturity do. And if you read through their reports, you'll see a theme of the top performing organizations and how they are embracing digital within their learning strategy. So that's well worth a read as well. Now, just to sum the key findings up, I put this together. I chose not to use bullet points on this occasion. And instead, I've created a little video for you with the a, with a key facts of this research that I've done. Quite key stats in there and some quite shocking stats as well. According to this, a quarter of adults in the UK don't have the skills required to survive in the digital era. That's quite scary stuff. So if there's one reason to develop digital capability, it's that one alone. How many of these 23% of adults are inside our own organizations that lack the basic skills to do the basic things that the internet now brings for us? Um, but coupled with that, thinking about our role in L&D, it's kind of not a question as to whether we choose digital or not, because digital has chosen us. It's ingrained in what we do every day. It's not a case of sort of making a choice of do we have digital learning or not. Digital learning is around us. It's found us already. So I guess the choice to make is within our L&D teams, within our organizations, within, you know, if we're a supplier providing digital learning, are we going to make that choice to turn the dial up? And are we going to make that choice to develop the skills? And what I'll do before the end of today is just give you an idea of some of the ways you can begin to develop digital capability inside your L&D team from a content development point of view. <laughs> Here it is again. <laughs> Me a few years ago. So the question is, what makes digital engaging? Well, what, you, you know, that's a great place to start from, really. What, what is it uh, that makes digital engaging? Well, the good news is the, the, the same sensors that we're using right now are exactly the same sensors that we use when we engage with digital learning. So if we get our heads around that, actually, there's some similarities to the face-to-face -face world and the digital world. It's just kind of in a slightly different way. So for me, digital is much more engaging when it has a purpose and it links to performance. So just like any form of learning at all, we have to have that strong organizational reason for people completing learning. How many times have we sat there at that conference because it's 12 months since we last did that piece of training and we sat there answering the same questions, the answers of which probably pinned up on the staff notice board and we complete it, and it kind of doesn't feel like there's any purpose to that. So if there's no purpose, was there any point in doing it in the first place? 
For me, digital learning has to be the right duration, the pace and flow, and just in time. So we don't need an hour video to tell us stuff. Sometimes just two minutes is plenty. Sometimes we don't need to sit down for a, a 45 minute e-lesson on a topic. Sometimes it's just a quick resource that we can grab hold of and dip into there and then. For me, digital learning is at its very best when it engages with our senses. So here we're talking about what we see, what we hear, and what we touch. Smell and taste sadly don't come into the equation. But those three things there, when we tweak the volume on that and we get the, the right audio level, we get the right narrator in there that, that, that fits the bill, that suits the audience, when we get the right visuals in place, some nice graphics, maybe it's a... Get the right level of touch and feel and interaction, uh, that's a good thing too. And some of this stuff is best when you draw inspiration from outside of the world of learning. So here we're talking about, you know, what's happening on TV right now. There's plenty of people that still think that you can't engage somebody digitally. And I, I kind of fail to buy into that because we sit down in front of TV for a full hour and we get soaked into the program that we're watching. What is it they're doing to hook us in? What techniques are they using? Uh, how have they changed the things? How are they using graphics? sound to engage with us. So let's start visually then. We've got plenty of time left. Just have a look at that slide for me. Is there anything in there that's in areas of your own personal development or areas of development for your teams? I'd love to dive into each one of these, but just sort of conscious of time. Video, okay. Uh, so your man there says video. Um, how are your video skills generally as a group? Is there any experts amongst us? Fantastic. Specialists, good. Still room to learn, good stuff. Uh, any complete novices when it comes to video? There's a fair few of us, yeah. And video is a big, big part, isn't it, of the, the digital learning experience. Everybody now, I'm struggling for my phone, everybody now with a camera in their pocket. It's fantastic. And just to grab a little clip of, I don't know, the managing director talking about something new or the bloke from marketing talking about uh, the new product that's coming on the horizon or some leadership guru in your organization and she's talking about uh, the ways that you can be a better leader. So video is a huge part and it's a massive topic as well. How do you film a video? What equipment do you need? How do you edit that video? How do you put music on top? How do you clip out the outtakes? How do you save the outtakes and publish them anyway? So it's a big topic. Anyone else got any sort of burning topics on there? Video's a great one to start with. Any others? Tell me again. Stories. stories. Okay. I love stories. I did, a, I did a MOOC last year and it was with the BBC and the University of Birmingham. Did you do that as well? Okay, I can see you nodding. Um, and it all started with storytelling. So to make a great video, it has to have a great story behind it. And isn't that true for any piece of learning that we do? Uh, so there's a skill in its own right. How do we become better storytellers? How do we capture information and turn it into compelling ways of communicating digital learning? I have to move over here. My microphone doesn't work there. Is that better? Okay, good stuff. So storytelling, it doesn't work at all over here. <laughs> Is that better? Just here. I'll stand here. <laughs> uh, so video, storytelling, go very well together. Uh, give us another one. Did you say blogging there? I'll take that one, fantastic. Good. Uh, so blogging, think about that visually. You know, just going back to the basics of text on a screen, how do we blog? How do we, again, write an article? How do we put information together, tell a story, make it compelling, make it relevant to the audience? So there's some highly technical skills on here, but blogging is just one of those basic things that, that maybe it's time that some people develop a little bit more. Let me move on to audio. I love audio. You might have guessed already. 
massive part of our e-learning. I, I started, um, I guess, digital skills. The first bit for me was honing voiceover skills. It's an incredibly challenging topic to get your head around, and I'm still getting my head around it. Um, but I can remember those early days of e-learning, that, that narrator that was in there, that, that monotone voice that just grated on you and made your ears bleed, uh, losing the will to live and all that sort of stuff. Voiceover is a skill in itself. And actually choosing voiceover talent is a skill. So how do we get the right voice for our e-lesson? How do we get the right voice for uh, our video? How do we make that voice sound in how do we make it sound authentic and all of that stuff? Any others on there? Let's stick out. Interviews, fantastic. Okay, yeah. So interview techniques, so thinking back to making videos, interview skills are certainly an important thing. I need to hone up on my interview skills. I chit chat too much and I waffle on too much. And the videos end up 45 minutes long and end up with loads of stuff to cut out. Uh, but if you've got the right interview skills, you get the right story, you get the right questions, you get the right dialogue going. It saves you time in the edit because you've got the right information right on the offset. So actually sort of thinking out the box of learning, there's another area of development. And we're not talking here about recruitment interviews. This is a different thing altogether. This is very similar to maybe what people do in TV and we listen to the radio. What tips can we pick up from them in terms of really getting better at our interview skills? Thank you, good shout. Uh, just one more. Music, okay. Bit of music to kick us off with today. As I listen now, there's no music, is it? It's a little bit quiet. So I thought I'd pop some music on and you know, see if we can engage people in that way. But thinking about our e-learning, our videos and things like that, is there a place for music inside what we do? And actually, what music do we choose? What is the right music for our audience? What's the right level of that music? Or actually, should there be no music at all? And it should be bare speech. So another sort of topic to explore that you don't tend to find in learning and development, going outside, talking to some music producers, finding some music libraries. You know, in some of the work that I do, I have access to production music libraries. So I don't need to go and pay lots of money and expensive licensing. So there's another area to learn about is, is music. Good stuff. And uh, just sort of moving on to touch. I don't know how you're interacting with me on Twitter right now, but my phone is buzzing in my tingly down my leg. Um, so there's a, there's a way that I'm touching and interacting with you today. But again, think about our digital learning. Back to that first horrible experience, the most excitement in my body was the finger on my right hand as it excitedly clicked next to continue. And that's kind of the repetitive motion that I had back in the day. So what else can we do within our digital learning to make it engage? To touch and feel their way through. How can we give things about on the screen? Puzzles to solve and all of that stuff. It's a huge area of development and there are things to learn about just that topic alone. Uh, the bit I'd like to pick up with there is linking to the online community. So something we do very well at DPG is we have an online community of practice. We have thousands of people from HR and L&D on there. It's free to join, by the way. So do look that up on Google. And a whole big community of practice sharing ideas and information. They have groups for their study groups. We have groups for technology. We have groups for HR practice. We have groups for all sorts of things. So very often what we do is we glue our online learning together with the community. So you do a little bit of learning, you maybe watch a video, you maybe do some interactive bits, and then you go over onto the, the DPG community, and you join a dialogue that's happening there, you get some discussion going, and those sorts of things. Gamification, I'm sure if you walk around this building today, there'll be lots of gamification happening. And this isn't just about developing in-house capability, sometimes it's about bringing in the external skill that we need as well. But I guess the more that we can do in-house, 
the more it saves us a few quid. Talking to a lady, wherever she is, she's disappeared. Oh, there you are, hello. Talking to a lady this morning about, uh, you know, the balance between in-source things or do you outsource things? I guess it would be great to outsource everything, but while well, we haven't got big bulging wallets, I guess we can't do that. So developing some of this in-house capability is really important to do. So I've said we've kind of got to choose digital, and we've kind of got to choose this approach of developing our digital capability. But all of that stuff that I've just given you, it can kind of feel a bit overwhelming because there's so much stuff on there. And we haven't even talked about the other digital skills that we're likely to need. Uh, curation, uh, writing, uh, understanding platforms, understanding social media. There's all this stuff that we've got to get our heads around. It can feel a little bit overwhelming. And just going back to the point that I made earlier, that for me is why it's critical that I'm a specialist and not an expert. Because if I attempt to turn the dial up too far and become that expert in everything, I don't believe there is one when it comes to digital, it's kind of a bit overwhelming and things get a little bit on top of me. So my advice to anyone is to kind of pick those areas that we've seen, to choose one of those areas and start focusing on that for now. Build up some capability in that area and then maybe bring some other members of the team along in, in other areas of digital skills. So one step at a time. Just want to leave you with some ideas then in terms of ways that you can uh, develop your digital capability. Technology is letting me down, my watch has stopped. Uh, but we've got just a few minutes. So here's some of the ways that I've developed my digital skills. Um, I have to give a hat tip to DPG. Not only do they now employ me, but actually they've been a big part of me developing my L&D capability, but also my digital skills as well. And particularly Mr. Mike Collins at the back has very much supported me uh, with my journey of developing my <laughs> all of this uh, technology stuff. YouTube, the world's second largest search engine in the world, has some fantastic resources. If you want to know how to, how to be a narrator, or if you want to know how to uh, make e-learning more engaging, or maybe you're working in an articulate storyline, they're here today somewhere, and you want some tips on techniques on using their software, it's all on YouTube, isn't it? Uh, Lynda.com, is anyone subscribers of Lynda? Uh, just a few of us. What do you think to it? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, you subscribe as well. Is it good? There's all sorts on there, isn't there? So I've been learning uh, After Effects on there, learning how to animate things. Uh, I've sharpened my video editing skills using Linda, and for about sort of 15, 20 quid a month, I've got a library of courses available to me. Uh, just a couple to pick out of there. Gravy for the brain. Um, do look that up. Uh, voiceover skills, uh, presentation skills. I sign myself up for that. Um, people per hour, a network of freelancers that you can bring in, uh, and again, sort of bring in some external digital expertise. Uh, massive fan of my personal learning network on Twitter and LinkedIn, who teach me something new every day, every hour. Um, so again, you know, you need some advice on something, go and ask for it. Uh, learning Now TV, that's a broadcaster TV channel uh, focused on learning and development. And being a part of that has, has helped me, again, to develop a, a higher level of, of digital capability. So check all these things out. If you're on Twitter, I've tweeted them out at some point this morning. Uh, do come along to us as well and talk to us at the, the DPG stand because, as I said before, it's kind of pointless having all these digital skills if you don't have the L&D capability. I tweeted this morning, it's, it's, it's been retweeted a few times. I likened it to a dentist doing open heart surgery. It just kind of shouldn't happen at all. If we're going to work in the, the digital learning space, we absolutely have to have that L&D knowledge to go with it as well. And vice versa, if we've got technical people in our team, maybe they need to develop their L&D knowledge too. Good stuff. So just to finish up on, 
just kind of summarize what I've talked about. Um, so there is a di shortage of digital skills. Look out for that towards maturity report today. We'll tweet it from DPG. I have no doubt that you'll find in there evidence of high performing organizations using digital to the very best. Um, you don't need to be an expert on this stuff. We're not sort of creating the next MGM film or anything like that. But turning that dial up bit by bit, learning something new, piece by piece, just start kind of tweaking up the engagement levels of our digital content, make it look better, sound better, feel better, piece by piece. And if we start that now, you know, a couple of years' time, things will probably look a lot different and a lot more engaging too. The sensors will guide you on the skills that are needed. So do this for me. Go into your organizations, look at your L&D outputs, both in the classroom and digitally, and critique it. What is it about it that could make it look better, sound better, feel better? And what are the skills that we need inside our team, internally or externally, to help us to do that? There are loads of resources to help you. I'll be hanging around uh, the DPG stand if you want to talk to me about resources and how do you develop digital capability, uh, come and talk to us at the same time as talking about your L&D capability. So good stuff. I think that's pretty much about it. We're bang on the money with time. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, we're hanging around the DPG stand, which is just behind you on that side there. If you look over that side, it looks like there are some of goodies, uh, some mobile phone chargers, is that right? Fantastic. How many have you got? You've got five. another five on the side as well. Thank you very much, folks. Enjoy the rest of your